Greetings from Chennai, India, the global headquarters of Zoho Corporation. I am Ram Prakash and I am the director of AI research at Zoho. Twenty twenty three is going to be an interesting year for AI. The technology has gone through cycles of boom and bust, meaning AI summers and AI winters. But now it has come out of its infancy and it's becoming mainstream. So 2023, we will see almost all of our digital experiences being enhanced by AI. It's going to be an interesting year ahead. Also, there has been an increased awareness on privacy, meaning what kind of data is created and how are businesses and organizations consuming them. So even with AI, we are going to see a lot of privacy aware AI models that are coming in and the legal framework and regulations will also catch up to this tech in 2023, given how AI is becoming an integral part of almost everything. The last few months of 2022, we had very interesting use cases coming out from generative AI, right? Things like DALI, ChatGPT, we're all making a lot of noise. 2023, we will see how really helpful are they? How mainstream will they become in your everyday life? So all said, I am so bullish on how AI is going to change our lives in 2023. Thank you for your time and wishing you all a very prosperous 2023. Hi, my name is Bruce Kornfeld. I'm the Chief Marketing and Product Officer at StoreMagic. And my 2023 prediction is that the cloud will have significant decline in usage for edge computing use cases. And this is primarily because customers that are dependent on collecting data, managing customer information, dealing with real time, the cloud just doesn't cut it. The cloud is very expensive in terms of running applications, storing data, transmission costs. Also, the cloud can be unreliable in that it does, the internet does go down occasionally and these businesses cannot afford any downtime. And the last one is performance. Um, even though there's a lot of expensive internet capability out there, the most expensive internet connection can't get around the speed of light. And for real-time applications, sending data back and forth to applications running in the cloud just won't cut it for some customers. So cloud's gonna grow for edge computing use cases. I'm Khalid Raza, founder, CEO of Graphient. Hi there, I'm Ali Sheikh, chief product officer for Graphient. So Khalid, what's the big prediction for 2023? What do you think is going to happen next year? In 2023, enterprises will pivot towards network as a service. Instead of designing and building networks, they will consume network as a service. So what do you think, you know, what does that mean? Take us a little bit deeper into what does it mean to move to network as a service? So the data growth that is being created so distributed that they cannot continue to build bespoke networks. Mm -hmm. Their topologies are getting very complex. At the core of it, enterprise just wants to apply policy towards their data consumption and data creation. So instead of enterprises building networks, they will consume this as a service and apply their security and connectivity policies. The data growth of, is taking enterprise towards more peer-to-peer -to -peer distributed connectivity model. And the current model of building, designing, deploying network is not sustainable. So 2023, the year enterprises stop building their own network and consume it as a service. Good everyone, I'm Chad Skipper, with Global Security Technologist here at VMware. And with 2022 coming to a close, it's an opportune time to reflect you know, on the past year and look ahead to what 2023 has in store for defenders in the cybersecurity industry at large. Now, here's what I'm looking for in the coming year. In 2023, we'll continue to see an evolution of initial access tactics as cyber criminals attempt to gain a foothold inside of your organizations. A main goal of such access is to carry out aggressive API attacks against your modern infrastructure and exploit those workload vulnerabilities within that environment. Now, because of the majority of the traffic within the modern application is API traffic, 
and this traffic is not often closely monitored, this is going to fuel lateral movement as cyber criminals continue to use evasive tactics and techniques once inside of your environment to divert detection across your VDIs, your VMs, as well as your traditional applications. Now, it may be a new year, but the primary goal of cyber criminals really stays the same. That's to gain the keys to the kingdom through four key steps. One is steal the credentials, then move laterally, acquire that data, and then monetize it. Next in 2023, I believe that remote desktop protocol will fuel this island hopping attacks. Now, cyber criminals will continue to utilize island hopping, which is a technique that really aims to hijack an organization's infrastructure and attack its customers. Now, remote desktop protocol is regularly used by threat actors during island hopping campaigns to really disguise themselves just like uh, your system administrators. Now, as we head into the new year, it's a threat that we should be keep on top of mind for all organizations, but particularly those in the healthcare industry, given the sensitive nature of the personal health data in possession. Now, 2023 is sure to be a busy one for the cyber defenders. Whatever it may bring, I wish you all a happy and a healthy new year. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, everyone. My name is Ian Van Rienen, and I'm the Chief Technical Officer at Digital Employee Experience Management Company, 1E. As we wrap up 2022, I anticipate that organizations will look to focus on two major areas in the new year, IT sustainability and the end user experience. As remote work remains a constant heading into 2023, we'll see more discussion around IT sustainability in two senses. Firstly, reducing IT costs as more employees work from home. And secondly, reducing the impact on the environment. Around 70% of a laptop's carbon footprint comes from the manufacturing process. So organizations can take tangible action towards both kinds of sustainability if they extend the life cycle of company devices. In 2023, more leaders will ask, how can we reuse, repurpose, and refresh IT equipment more efficiently. We'll also see more organizations prioritize efforts to drive an optimal end user experience. Maintaining in-office collaboration and productivity within a distributed workforce requires a frictionless digital employee experience, or DEX as we call it. As such, we'll see continued investment in DEX strategies as leaders reevaluate how to approach hybrid work. From all of us at 1E, we hope you have a happy and healthy 2023. Hi, I'm Sunil Yu. I am the CISO at Jupyter One. One of the big things that I think uh, it's going to happen in cybersecurity is attack surface reduction. So you've heard about attack surface management, but I think what we'll discover is that we have a lot of elective attack surface. And some of the times we make these design choices out of laziness or ignorance. It's sort of like eating um, junk food when you have healthy options available. Um, so over the next year, I think what we're going to see is an opportunity to truly drive towards reducing our attack surfaces. And, and, and as an example, one of the attack surfaces that I think we can work towards reducing is um, our endpoint and our networks. With digital transformation, we've seen a lot of migration to the cloud and to SaaS applications. And really, those allow us to uh, deprecate many of our controls and many of our attack surfaces on the endpoint and on the network. Uh, another concern that we're going to have in 2023 is um, an impending recession. We'll see whether or not we're actually in a recession at that point in time or not. But uh, ultimately, it comes to a question of how do we optimize and make more efficient the things that we already have. And this is something that uh, I think we uh, struggle with in security because we oftentimes want more. Um, and as a part of that uh, argument, we oftentimes say, for example, we want more visibility. We want more uh, in insight into things. But it's not visibility that we lack. We actually lack um, how to make use of the visibility we already have. How do we make, um, how do we create what I call structural awareness by taking the visibility we already have and, and making the most out of it? So this whole notion of, uh, of optimizing 
uh, our resources and making uh, better use of them is going to be a, a, an intense focus in 2023, especially as we have tightening budgets across the board. In 2023, I think we're going to give up on the user as a line of defense. I think what we've seen over the past year and, and for a long time is that uh, we can come up with ways to uh, tell the user, hey, watch out for these phishing attacks, don't click on these things, and so on and so forth. And what we've seen is um, we've had situations where despite very strong controls that we think are more or less phishing resistant, they end up, um, the attacker finds ways to still uh, get around that and get the user to, to do something that creates um, pretty catastrophic results for some of the organizations that we've heard about in 2023, that 2022 that got breached. So I think in, the, in 2023, we're going to come to a realization that um, our, the defenses that we have around the user and trying to have the user be part of our, our uh, security stack, so to speak, um, really need to be rethought through and to have other guardrails and other things that assume for the most part that the user is fallible and is going to click on something or uh, share information that uh, may uh, previously get us compromised.